Hello, YouTube. It's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome back to Movies That I Missed from 2020 Month. I haven't done a review for a while. I'm sorry. I've just been doing a lot of live streams. But this one is a kids a kids superhero movie from 2010 that came out right, right before the year was over on Christmas Day. And it was a Netflix original movie called We Can Be Heroes, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Yes, this is a follow-up to Sharkboy and Lava Girl, except that the effects are way better. And uh, it's, I think, a lot better. It's not, as, it's not as stupid as that movie. It's not perfect, but it is a lot better than Sharkboy and Lava Girl. It has uh, the actress that played uh, Shark, uh, you know, uh, a Lava Girl is back playing the same role, uh, Taylor Dooley, but not um, not the original actor that played it because Taylor Lautner didn't want to come back to play Shark Boy, so they got another actor to play him, and he's he doesn't talk. So yeah, there's that. You also have some new people in. You have Yaya Gosselin, who's the main Spanish girl in the movie. You have Lion Daniels, Andy Walken, Halla Finley, Lotus Blossom, Dylan Henry. Uh, Henry Lau, uh, Dylan Henry Lau, Andrew Diaz, uh, Isaiah Russell Bailey, a Akira Akbar, Nathan Blair, and Vivian Blair. You have twins. And you have the one and only Mando himself, Pedro Pascal's in the movie as well, as uh, the little girl's father. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Missy. It's a very cute movie. It's basically if you took X-Men and a little bit of Harry Potter and a little bit of... Uh, Spy Kids, and, and you put it in a blender, and yeah, you got it. You got uh, a nice spinoff to uh, to freaking Sharkboy and Lava Girl. This is not as bad as those Spy Kids movies, because to be honest, the only one I like is the second one, because the cast didn't do it for me, mostly. It's too weird, and it just it, it wasn't coherent at all. This is a lot better. Uh, Missy's grandmother, that actress, can act. like she Her accent is so thick, I'm like, uh -oh, what are you saying? You know, seriously, your accent is so thick, I can't understand you. Uh, Mando's good in the movie, but he's not in the film that much. You know, Pedro Pascal, he plays um, her father. What's his name? Marcus Marino. Yeah, he used to be, a, his team used to be a bunch of superheroes. The parents are the superheroes. It's basically a little bit of sky high as well. And they're, you know, training their kids to be the next superheroes. And uh, it's a good premise. You know, it works. It's pretty funny. I laughed a couple of times. It was the most watched title of, of Christmas of the weekend in, on Netflix because Disney Plus had soul. I still haven't seen that. It finished second behind new Netflix release Outside the Wire in the, its fourth weekend. Yeah. It, the film was seen by 53 million households during the first four weeks in December all the way to January of 2021. Wow. And this is the Rotten Tomato score. They were way, way more merciful with this than Sharkboy and Lava Girl. 73%. Although it may be too zany for adults, I thought it was quirky enough. It wasn't like god-awful, and it was not two hours long. The movie was only uh, 97 minutes. It is not as bad as Thunder Force. I know that, because it's for kids. And it doesn't have stupid curse words and adult jokes that go over kids' heads. It, it says here, um, yeah, the, the We Can Be Heroes balances its sophisticated themes with hard and zealous originality. It's zany, imaginative, and extremely kid-oriented Avengers riff that combines major ma stars with Snapchat-level special effects in order to lend a live-action Saturday morning cartoon vibe to a story about seizing your own destiny. Yeah, that's basically it. And it's not a bad movie. It's not. It's decent. Uh, the, the cast is really good. I think the kids are good actors. The adults are not assholes like in Upside Down Magic. Um, the acting is mostly solid, except for the two people that, uh, the, the lady, Andriana Barraza, she also played the grandmother in Dora. She was awful. Just don't, you could have cut her out. And Priyanka Chopra, Jonas. Yeah. Half of the movie, she does this. She's like looking like she's a dog. She turns her head around a lot. She's completely lost. She's a gorgeous woman, but here kids films are not really her specialty. She just, I knew she was the villain. I mean, the foreigner usually always is the villain. I mean, come on. And one of the kids, there's a twist in the movie. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's a dumb twist that comes out of nowhere. One of the kids is a traitor. Oh, I didn't see that coming. I'm like, yeah, it was weak. The villain was also there. Who was the villain? Christopher McDonald played the president. He was okay. Um, Christian Slater was in the movie. Uh, Boyd Holbrook was the miracle guy. Uh, who else? Who, who was... I don't really know who the villain is. I forgot. I, I got to look through it. Um, 
Let me see. Yeah, the, and the film, like I said, it looks good. It, it, it doesn't look cheap like a lot of other movies. And it's it's not a an amazing film. Like some critics thought it was terrible. But I'm like, it's cute for what it is. The little girl that plays Guppy is very cute. She's the daughter of uh, Shark Boy and, uh, and, and Lava Girl and, and the daughter of her. Because they got together in the, in the, you know, after 15 years, something had to happen. So they produce a child. It's, it was good enough. I mean, there's going to be a sequel. Hopefully, maybe Taylor Lerner will make a cameo this time. Not a main role, but a cameo. And uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, like I said, the kids were good enough and entertaining enough. And the jokes were, you know, they were mixed between, you know, really funny or just like, eh. You know, not, not the greatest, but it wasn't a bad movie. From last year, I think it's better than Wonder Woman 84. It's got way more happening. It's shorter, mercifully. And Pedro Pascal's not a cartoon here. Just saying, guys. If you hated him in Wonder Woman 84, this is an alternative besides seeing him as Mando. Because he's very charismatic. He has a great voice. And, you know, he's he's badass no matter what he does. He could just stand there and look badass. And it's a good movie. Like, for, for kids, it's perfect for them. It's not offensive. It's not going to have a lot of blood. Don't let them see things like Invincible because it's not for kids. You know, it's got way too much blood and 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 uh, yeah, and and it's it's not it's a more, more adult oriented and also the boys and Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah, no, none of those are for kids. This is for kids. This is for uh, kid friendly. There's no blood. It, there's no gore. There's no foul language. It's fine for kids. And it's not perfect, but like I said, Priyanka Chopra's acting is bad. The, the grandmother, some of the effects, some of them look okay, some of them look terrible. Like, some of them look like a video game, but it's a Netflix movie. I was not expecting the Avengers, guys, you know? Endgame already proved that, yeah, superhero movies can go another level besides just big effects spectacle. They can have a grand story and great characters and moments that make you that stay with you. But this movie is fine. If you have kids, or if, you're, if you want to see something lighter in the superhero genre that's not stupid, like Thunder Force, this is for you, so... I would recommend it, at least to watch it once. And yes, I'm looking forward to the sequel, because the first one was cute. So hopefully the sequel will be better. But get that grandmother out of there. We don't need any Mexicans in these, show, in these movies. Robert Rodriguez only puts it because it's his quota. He's Mexican, so he has to put a Mexican in every movie that he does. Whether it's one of his kids, or Sama Hayek, or uh, uh, you know Danny Trejo, or something. It's too much. It's pandering. Just don't do that anymore. Pascal's not Mexican, by the way. Uh, he's from Chile. But uh, yeah. Don't do that anymore, Robert Rodriguez. We get it. You're like Christopher Nolan. You have to put a person of your kind in your own movies, which I don't get. I don't understand it. But anyway, the movie itself was good for what it was. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next review.